Let's talk about compound events, which is where we combine two events together, like the coin being heads and also the number being three. One thing that will help in talking about compound events are a few other words. So let's look at these two words first. The first word we'll look at is independent. I've talked a bit, a bit about this before, but two events are independent if one event doesn't affect the occurrence of the other event. For example, tossing a coin and rolling a die. If you get heads, that doesn't change the number that would be on the die. They're completely different. Um, as a counterexample, two events that might be dependent are whether you choose to speed while driving to work or not speed, and whether you have an accident or not an accident. Obviously, if you speed, that does make it more likely that you'll have an accident. They're dependent. But these two things whoop, over here are independent. It happens that if we have two independent events, let's call them A and B, then the probability of A happening and also B happening is the probability of A multiplied by the prob probability of B. You just multiply them together. And we'll see an example over here. Another word that is useful for us to know is complementary. And complementary means uh, an event not happening. Two events are complementary if exactly one of them must occur. So for example, me flipping a coin and getting heads and me flipping a coin and getting tails. Um, me rolling a die and getting a one or me rolling a die and getting not a one, another thing. If we have an event called E, then we write E with a little dash on it, and that is the complementary event, sort of the opposite. It is also true that the probability of an event plus the probability of the complementary event equals one. Um, as an example, you know, you flip a coin, chance that it's heads is 50%, chance that it's tails is 50%, add them together, chance is one. If you roll a coin, oh, sorry, roll a die, and this one seems to have four sides on it, um, you know, that maybe my event is getting a one, the complementary event is getting not a one. Chance of getting a one is ooh, one in four, chance of not getting a one is three in four. Add them together and get one. I think that one might be easiest to see with an example, and we'll see an example of that over here in B. The scenario we'll look at is where we're flipping a coin and also picking a number randomly from one to four. First of all, let's find the probability that the coin is heads and the number is three. Now we could use a two dimensional grid here or a tree diagram, but I want to show you how this rule can help us. These two events are independent. They have nothing to do with each other. So the probability of getting a heads and a three is the probability of heads on the coin multiplied the probability of a three for the number. Now we've broken it down into two simpler problems. If you flip a coin, what is the probability that you get heads? It is a half. One outcome is heads out of two outcomes in total. And if you pick a number from one to four, what's the chance that you get a three? Well, exactly one of those numbers is a number three, so that is one outcome out of four that match what you're looking for. So now we can just multiply these together. One times one is one on the numerator, and two times four is eight on the den denominator. In the second example here, we have another compound event, you know, two events that must happen together. And it says we want to find the probability that the coin is heads and the number is not a one. So we can say the probability of heads and not one is the probability of getting a heads on the coin and the probability of getting not a one. Do you notice that I've used a little dash here to show that it is the complement of getting a one? To figure out the chance of not getting a one, well, the chance of getting a heads is easy. That's one over two. The chance of not getting a one, hmm. The outcomes for the die are one, two, three, and four. There is one of these outcomes out of four that is getting a one. 
but there are three outcomes out of four that match this description here. Three of these outcomes are not a one. This is not a one, this is not a one, and this is not a one. So there are three outcomes out of four that match the description, not a one. Another way of figuring this out is that if you wanted to look at the chance of getting a one, or the chance of rolling a one on this die is one out of four. And if you do one, take one out of four, you get three out of four. Hmm. And our last step, we can figure out the fraction. The numerator is one times three, which is three. The denominator is two times four, which is eight. And that's it. Um, that is how you can break down a compound event, where the two events are independent, into two simpler events and just multiply them together. I hope this has been helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Bye everyone.